Welcome to The Thought Vault, where we learn to unlock our minds to live with more purpose and bold intention. I'm your host, Emily Vermillion. Take a deep breath and let's get started. I wanted to hop in before this episode got started to recognize that we are all dealing with the COVID-19 crisis. I want to first applaud all of the healthcare workers and essential businesses that are keeping everything running and enabling us all to survive. I am committed throughout this crisis of praying specifically about it at 10 p.m. every night, and I would love for you guys to join me in this. God is in control. He is sovereign overall. And maybe this episode will give you a moment to just focus on something else to be a good distraction and an exercise to get your mind thinking outside of this very uncertain time we're dealing with. I'm praying for all of us, and I hope you will too. Enjoy the episode. The title of this episode is Power of the Brain. Did you know that we are able to train our brains just like we train any other muscle in our bodies? And we can control how joyful we live our lives. I'm pretty sure you're going to have some awesome takeaways from today's episode, and I'm excited to dive into this topic. I've often marveled at so many of God's creations. I have these moments of awe that literally take my breath away or make me cry. Like when I look at a mountain, its grandeur, the elevation it creates, the different topography in the land, just seeing the sheer magnitude of a mountain range is breathtaking. Or looking at the ocean and how the sky meets the water, thinking about all the history, how that water's been there, all the life that lives in it. Just the sheer magnitude of it. Breathtaking. Looking at my husband with new eyes like I had when we first started dating. Breathtaking. Holding my child in my arms, feeling the weight of their little body. Looking at their eyelashes and their toes and their hands. How their little lips curl or the softness of their hair. Breathtaking. Looking at beautiful landscapes and stained glass in churches. Looking at craftsmanship that seems like would take thousands of years to accomplish. Breathtaking. There's so much creation around us that literally inspires me, helps me understand there's a huge bigger picture to life. Helps me feel gratitude and feel inspired. But those moments of awe are fleeting. They don't last very long. And they come randomly. More than often, I go through my day almost on autopilot without feeling that deep appreciation for my surroundings or that immense love in my heart for my husband or my kids that at times has taken my breath away, but at other times, I don't even give a second thought. Feeling grateful and humble when doing a simple chore like folding clothes or doing the dishes because I'm thankful that I even have those things to make my life easier. Not being discontent because of what I don't have. You know, having those moments of sheer contentment and fullness come and go. And I started thinking one day, why? Why does it have to come and go? Why can't I just live in a state of gratitude and contentment? the majority of the time? Why is it the other way around? I wanted to feel that appreciation all the time because in essence, it's at those times of great appreciation that I feel closest to God. I feel more grounded with who I am. I'm more at peace with where I'm at in my life. So I started to ask, could I change the way that I've been thinking? Could I change the way that I've been living? What is this missing link? I recognize that it's when I was noticing these small things or noticing the landscape around me. That was really when I was being present. I wasn't letting the noise and the chatter of the world fill the spaces. I wasn't letting comparison of having more money, a better body, a nicer house, or you know, a better this, a better that cloud my judgment. And I wasn't Constantly feeling under pressure about my never-ending to-do list. You know that chore list we all have running in our minds? It's at the times that I was sitting and noticing and being present that I felt 
the most joy. I wanted to feel present all the time. And that's what I began to realize that I was after. I shouldn't only be present when I'm removed from my normal, like being on vacation or on the weekends when life felt slower. I didn't want to live during the small special moments or time periods of my life. I wanted to feel that way all the time. God promised us to have a life full in Him, and I didn't want to feel so empty and rushed all the time, focused only on when. That's just not a way to live, and I wanted to live the best I could now. All of this started me on this journey, this journey to learn how to better understand my brain, how it worked, why I felt the things that I felt, and how that all interconnected with my body and my soul, and most importantly, my relationship with Christ. As much as I was in tune with my body, like eating healthy, exercising, living chemically free, I never thought about exercising my brain or even trying to understand how (laughs) or why my brain even works the way that it does. It was mysterious. And I knew that in the Bible, there is a lot of emphasis on being mindful, controlling our thoughts, directing them in the right way. Galatians 3.2 comes to mind. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on the earth. I knew my brain worked just like washing, my washing machine works and everything else works. But I began to really start peeling back the layers and reading a lot more about it, researching and staying up late and reading articles and buying books and devouring them. I found that there's a lot more to do with our mind, y'all. There's a lot of techniques you can practice too to help you really engage your entire brain. And through this process, I've been able to develop a deeper and more meaningful relationship with Christ and a more joyous and grateful appreciation for every moment of every day, for the people that are around me, as well as the circumstances that I'm walking through, even if they're good or bad. It has made me become a lot more present, a lot more hyper aware of God's grace and his glory in my life. And this is why I wanted to talk about this today. This is why I wanted this to be episode one of the Thought Vault podcast, because This is the essence of who we are, what we think about. That's our internal dialogue. That's the trueness of who we are. And so when I realized that I could train my brain, I could shape and shift the way I think to live more content, to live more like Christ and have a lot more overflow of joy, I wanted to share this. Our brains have so much more power than most of us even realize. And we can actually tap into that power and control a lot of it. Our brain consists of 70% water and has over 100,000 chemical reactions daily. Staying hydrated is a key component to good good brain power. And any amount of dehydration affects its functionality. So my rule of thumb has always been to drink at least 100 ounces of water a day. Sometimes less, sometimes I get more, but drink a lot of water. Most of the reactions occurring in our daily lives are being driven by our subconscious mind, about 90 to 95 percent, meaning that we basically move through our day without much thought. We literally are habitual beings. We do pretty much the same thing day in, day out. For instance, have you ever driven in your car and then realized you got to work and didn't have much recollection of the drive there? (laughs) Another example of this is remembering when you first got your driver's license, it was so new. You were like totally tapped into all the surroundings in your car, how it felt to have your hands on the steering wheel, the sun glaring in your eye through the windshield. It was exhilarating to get to drive anywhere. You had like butterflies in your stomach every time you started the ignition and pulled away from the house. But after years of drying, you master the skill And your subconscious basically takes over. You literally don't even remember getting yourself to work. It feels like nothing important. Our conscious brain, on the other hand, acts as the interface to that subconscious part. This means that our conscious brain sees, hears, feels. It's our five senses. And what we experience through our five senses, it sends to our subconscious brain for processing. Our subconscious brain has been trained, dug out, mapped, Based on all our past experiences, the beliefs that we have, our moral code that we've developed, you know, through our life. So our subconscious brain gets this information and just sends it down the most easy pathway. Most of our experiences aren't that much different than anything else. 
you know, as adults, do you ever realize how it takes something totally new and different to really exhilarate us? And this is why our brains have become so habitual, even in relation to how we feel about the interactions that we're having. Nothing ever really elevates our experiences unless it's something totally new. And we have to actually think about what's happening. And so we can easily become numb. Some will even introduce things to help elevate their senses like alcohol or substances or different, you know, exhilarators like shopping or, you know, these things that give us that woo feeling. But it's my hope that all of this knowledge that we start talking about will help you stop the numbness, draw closer to Christ and really engage in the life that you're living. The goal of our brain is to match the reality we see or think between the conscious and the subconscious. In essence, if we tell ourselves we are joyful, our brain will create the perfect chemical reactions to match that thought. That's how miraculous God created us. If, if we want to feel joy, we can think about feeling joy and our brain will release the right chemicals for that to feel. An amazing read I came across in my research was about multiple personality disorders. Dr. Braun and Dr. Miller both have discovered that physical alterations can occur between different personalities. They've conducted a lot of studies with multiple personality disorders because it's very it's a very intriguing topic how a person can be multiple people fully. And in their discovery and their research, things physically would actually change between the people and the personalities. So this includes eyesight. One personality legitimately would need glasses because that personality had poorer eyesight. Eye colors have even been known to change. Scars have even manifested between the personalities. In some cases, allergies are noticed. One personality could be extremely allergic to orange juice and the other personality have no effect from it at all. And this is because this the body, the brain, is fully embodying a different identity. The brain fully believes it's somebody else. And so these chemical reactions are firing in the brain to create all these differences. So think about that for a second. Our brain can literally dictate all of our life physically, mentally, and definitely spiritually. In a study by Dr. Penfield in 1957 of epileptic people, he discovered the power of the brain's memory because he was able to access a part of a patient's brain with an electrode, and she could recall in impeccable detail her second birthday. (laughs) This was a huge discovery because it showed that our brains truly have the ability to recall all of our experiences. And that blows my mind because there are days I literally can't remember what I even ate the day before (laughs) or even what day it is. So the fact that this woman's brain had a place in it that recalled her entire second birthday is mind boggling. After this study, it was like the floodgates opened. Neurologists and psychologists and doctors of many different fields were like, wow, there's so much more to the brain. So subsequent studies started happening, and they discovered that our memories are not only stored in parts of the brain, but also in all of our neurotransmitters that are found all over our bodies. So neurotransmitters are a function of every cell in our body, and they control interactions between different cells. They do all the connection and communication, so to speak, in our body. So they were discovering that parts of what we experience are stored in these neurotransmitters everywhere. So sometimes you'll hear like anger stored in the liver. There's some truth to that because our neurotransmitters are in every single part of our body. And if some of our memories and things are being stored in a certain area of our body, yeah, there's there's reactions from that. There was a study of mice. This is really interesting that these doctors did. And they were trying to see, you know, what part of the brain... What does the brain really control? And so they created this reward maze for the mice. And so the mice, you know, would go through the maze and at the end they'd get a reward. They would put the mice in the maze. They would go through, get the reward. And over a subsequent time period, the doctors would begin to remove portions of the mice's brains. So they would move, p- remove pieces, put them back in the maze. The mice would go through, get the reward. And so slowly they got to the point that the only thing they left was the brain stem. So this basically means like the 
when you picture a brain, like the whole brain was gone except for the stem part in the back of it. They only left the brain stem. And they put the mice back into the reward, reward maze. And guess what? The mice still could get through the entire maze. This is insane because it just shows that so much of our experiences that we filter in through our brain are contributing to our overall life, our overall physical presence. There are even certain traumas that, like I spoke to before, have been noted to be stored in different areas. And and when you focus on a trauma of your past, it could alleviate some of the symptoms that you're feeling in certain parts of your body. So with all this information, it's clear that the quality of our lives are very much in our heads. (laughs) To have a better life, to live better, we must think better. And the miraculous gift to us as Christians is that we can fill our minds with the truth about who we are because we know the truth. We can study God's word. We can meditate on what he says about us and see the fruit of these beliefs play out in our everyday life. I read an article uh, by Harvard. And in 2015, 16.1 million Americans reported experiencing major depression during the previous year, often struggling to function while grappling with just crippling despair. And there's an arsenal of treatments at hand, including, you know, talk therapy, uh, antidepressant medications, which are extremely helpful and help a lot of people. But even for some, those normal methodologies don't work that well or at all for them. In an article by Gail DeBoard, an instructor in radiology at Harvard Medical School and a neuroscientist at MGH's Martino Center for Biomedical Imaging, she started to explore one alternate approach to help people in this circumstance. And she started researching mindfulness meditation. In 2012, she demonstrated that changes in brain activity in subjects who have learned to meditate hold steady even when they are not meditating. So she found that before, and when she took before and after scans of subjects who learned to meditate over the course of two months, while they were not meditating, the before and after scans wouldn't change that much. The scans still detected that part of the brain that's activated during meditation. It would last all day. So part of the brain that this would occur in is the amygdala. The amygdala handles a lot of functions, a lot of feelings, memory, the amygdala does a lot for our brains. And she noticed that through meditation, people were able to activate their amygdala in a way that people who don't meditate couldn't do. And it really changed the game on how being mindful and approaching your thought life can truly enhance your brain's power, basically, and and the and training your brain in a way that otherwise can't be attained. And scripture meditation is mentioned 23 times, 19 in the book of Psalms alone. Meditation is the practice of focus, basically. And there's nothing more profound than focusing on God and his word. A simple verse, Psalm 145, 5, gives us a perfect definition of what it is to meditate. It says, On the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wondrous works, I will meditate. And that's the point, to be present to take control of our thoughts, be immersed in the life that we're living, recognize what's happening around us, being grateful for the environment that we're in. We are equipped to handle tribulation that we face. We have the Holy Spirit within us. So meditating on how God sees us, how he sees the world, we can learn to see it that way too. We can learn to wake up with that lens on. We can have the power of our brain, the Holy Spirit within us, communicating and helping us recognize the goodness and the joy and the contentment that can only come from Christ. We're not inundated and overstimulated and overwhelmed by the nuance of what society says or the expectations others have of us or that we have of ourselves. We can get outside of that hamster wheel, feeling like each day is just rolling into the next day that there's nothing really significant going on. Yes, there is. You're alive. You have purpose. And God gave us power. He gave us a mind made in his image. And if we take the time to train it, to think about it, to manage our thoughts, to understand that when we let go of the world's perceptions of us, we get to live differently. 
And what a wonderful gift that is. So I think it would be awesome for us to take a moment and experience mindfulness. Let's meditate for a moment. Let's focus on God's word. Let's get into a place that we can be mindful of and present of where we're at. And let's see how this makes us feel for the rest of the day. So I want you guys to close your eyes. If you're driving, uh, definitely keep them open. I do a lot of meditating in the car too because it's a serene, it can be a very serene place. So if you're able, close your eyes though so that you can focus a little bit better. Find a comfortable space, a comfortable position. I like to lay down when I am meditating and doing my meditative prayers. You just want to relax your full body. Think about Relaxing your head, your neck. Relax your jaw, open your mouth. Let your shoulders fall down. Relax your legs and your elbows and your wrists and your hands. Relax your feet. Now, breathe in through your belly a big, deep breath count to four if you need to help you breathe in deeply so breathe in for four counts breathe out for four counts if you place your hand over your heart you can actually feel your heart rate slow repeat this breathing just keep focusing on your breathing listen to your heart beating Focus on filling your lungs, making your chest rise, and breathing it completely out. Keep breathing in that deep, rhythmic breathing. And if your mind starts to wonder, just bring it back to focusing on breathing. Breathe in that life-giving breath. Breathe in and breathe out, simply focusing on being still. And as you keep breathing in and out, I'm going to speak the verse Psalm 145 over us as a prayer. And this is what I like to do. I like to meditate on God's word, meditate on a verse, Say a prayer, filling our thoughts only with God's truth, not thinking of anything else. Lord, on the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wondrous works, I will meditate. On the glorious splendor of your majesty, And on your wondrous works, I will meditate. On the glorious splendor of your majesty, and on your wondrous works, I will meditate. May today be filled with opportunity to see the world through your eyes, Lord. May the experience of today allow me to rest in the control that you have to work all things together for good. May I be a witness to all the goodness that is around me. Lord, on the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wondrous works, I will meditate. Amen. Continue to breathe in and breathe out. Breathing in, breathing out. Go through your day thinking about what you're seeing. What you're experiencing. Try to still your thoughts and not let it be rushed today. Practice.
being present and see how you feel at the end of your day. Let it be a goal to witness what is actually happening around you, what beauty and creation, what all breathtaking moment you can see. It's there. There's always something beautiful to see each and every day. So open your eyes, focus on something that you can easily see. We're going to work on being focused and present and controlling our thoughts more today. We will be mindful and we're going to focus on God's presence in our life and in our body. And as you resume back to a normal pattern breathing, I hope this gave you a moment to just have a quick example and experience of how mindfulness and focused thought can help you feel more energized, feel more alert, feel brighter. This is something I like to try to do even multiple times a day. It's great to start your day. So sometimes I try to do this even before I get out of the bed while I'm still laying there. Before I go to sleep is another great time to practice meditative prayer and really just focus on God's word and what he says. So this can kind of help you understand how when we quiet our thoughts and we quiet our mind, we have a different perspective to go through our day. That consequently brings a lot of joy (laughs) and a lot of contentment. In our next episode, we're going to be diving into a little bit more of this meditative prayer tool. And it can quite literally just change the way that you're living each day. And it's fun and it's relaxing and it gives you a moment to yourself. And it really, for myself, has given me such a deeper relationship with Christ. When I take the time to be still, to focus on his word, just as he tells us to do in the Bible, it is so life-giving. And it really helps me to have a lot more stillness through my day and not feel so chaotic. And it also gives me a chance to really understand and hone in on what my thoughts are. Because as you can see, and as we've talked about today, our thoughts control our brains and our brains control our bodies. So if we're thinking healthy, if we're thinking joyfully, if we're thinking, you know, hopefully, that is what our bodies are going to respond to throughout the day. And it's going to give us a much more calmer, receptive, joyful demeanor. And isn't that an awesome goal to have? (laughs) And if you want to practice this meditation again, simply click the link in the show notes of this uh, episode, or you can go to boldpearls.com forward slash meditations, and you can get a link to every meditation or mindset exercise that we do in our episodes. So that's a great just free tool for you all to take advantage of. I would love if you guys would please subscribe to the Thought Thought podcast. When you subscribe, you get notified when new episodes are dropped um, and it makes it easier for you to stay on top of anything new that is released. It would mean so much to me if you would leave a review. That's just a good way to get this podcast out there. Apple, Spotify, all the apps love when you review because it gives um listeners feedback. And when we have good feedback, we get more eyes on the podcast. And I would just love to build this community as big and wide as we can. So any amount of love, sharing, tagging um, this episode, tag me in it, share it on social media. That would mean so much to me. Um, And I always love to shout people out who are sharing things that are helping them. So that would mean the world to me. Um, And I just cannot wait to see how this community grows and inspires one another. You can also find the Thought Vault and extra things on Facebook, which you can find that link in the show notes as well. We have a Facebook group that's dedicated to the Thought Vault podcast listeners and fun things happen in there. I'm going to be going live in there a lot, continuing talks about each episode Um, And who knows, some fun giveaways and lots of other things are to come. So if you would like to join the Facebook community, that would be awesome. So just click that link in the show notes as well. And until next time, 
Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Romans 12.2. Go live with bold intention. Bye for now.